Man, I'm really struggling to come up with a video for today. Do another Bloodborne guide. Yeah, but don't you think they'd want some, like, more original, non-guide-based content? Another guide for the pile. Do it. What is going on, Tentacrew? It is Billy the Squid with another Bloodborne guide. This one is going to take us through the forest. And uh, just to do a little recap of where we left off in the last video, we are sitting at 25 strength, 21 skill. We also have recently purchased eight throwing knives. Those are very important. If you have not gotten them already before we go into this next area, do so. Also, our saw clearer is up to plus three with two gems stuck right on in there. And now that we've got the recap out of the way, let's get this show on the road. So first things first, we got to grab a few things from Cathedral Ward before we can deep dive into the old forest. So let's get there. Okay, first things first, we need to get a little bit of prep for something way in the future. This is going to be a callback in a half once we finally get there. But we are going to run up these stairs and pass this gate that we opened up prior. Hang a sharp left past the lever. And then we're just going to stand here, wait for these bad boys to walk right on up. We're going to go over here, pull this lever and go grab some stuff out of this courtyard up ahead. This is where the entrance to the forest is at, but we are not going to be going there yet. Uh, grab up all these madmen's knowledge. Uh, you may not need them for the run, but it is always nice to have a decent amount of insight available to you in case you need to purchase some more beast blood vials or anything along those lines. Or beast blood cocktails, I guess I should say. Hanging left down here, there is a blood dew that you can grab. And we're going to head over this way. By the time you get over here, this guy should be walking around this side of the thing. We're going to run past now. Do not engage the man in combat because that will end poorly for you. Also, make sure you have your bold hunter's marks equipped because we are going to need to quickly dip, duck, and dive out of here because this guy is hot on our tail. And we are outie. So what we just grabbed were 12 poison knives. Those are going to come in much later ahead, but this is the most opportune time to go ahead and grab them. So do it. Now we can go back up the stairs the same way we went, and we're actually going to go to the forest route this time. So... Follow me, children, and let me tell you a tale of a hunter whose visit to the forest would end very well. Also, just a disclaimer, guys. Hopefully, you all have been enjoying these videos. I have recently um, gotten the No Death Run going live on stream that has been posted up on the channel. So if you haven't already checked that out, feel free to do so. Those are shining coins. I got distracted by the shiny while I was talking and grabbed them. Go ahead and grab that gem, though. It is quite important. Um, the antidote, if you hadn't grabbed any from Old Yarnum, might as well grab that one. Just in case during uh, your run, if you're not doing a no hit run, uh, you happen to get poisoned somewhere in the forest. It's nice to have an antidote on hand just to be safe. Jump on down Shmia, and away we go. So you're going to go straight at this cliff ahead, drop off kind of left side onto this rock, then drop right side, roll on over here, and shards ahoy. We're just gonna stand here for a second, wait for uh, this big bad werewolf to walk on by. There's an oil urn tosser up on the hillside as well. Uh, we don't want to get hit by either of those, let alone both in con combination will mark the end of a run. So let that guy get past, and we are going to yeet on through. This will bring us to the first lantern. Definitely light it, but we don't really have any reason to go back, so we won't. Moving on forward. Aggro these guys. 
get them out of the way. There's also a gunner over here. Drag that guy down the bridge because you don't want to get shot while dealing with him. Three hits for each of them and then run over to the left to get another Queen Bloodstone shot. And then dodge the very, very funny setup uh, log trap. And we're going to wait for this beastie boy to walk on past. So he, there's a boulder in the middle here. He's going to route left. Once he does, we are going to route right. That boulder will kind of act as a little middle ground so he can't get full up on us. And then just hug this hillside all the way over to the right and drop down. Once you're down here, you are safe. No worries. Make sure to equip some Molotovs, aim it at this guy, and let loose the fury. Um, you can run up and smack him, but he goes into a group of crows down there, and there's no reason to put yourself in harm's way if you don't have to. So, next part is just a big long sprint up the hill through the flowers to Grandmother's house we go. Uh, there will be a beastie boy that will follow you through here. Make sure your stamina stays not at zero. And uh, you should be able to get away from him just fine. All the way up the hill, past this house. And you are good. Extend out your weapon. Give some dogs some nice head boots. Just so they don't come out of the cages and uh, fuck with you. Dogs in these games, am I right? And then hang around this corner. We're not going to be going any further. We just want to come in here and grab these blue elixirs. These are some of the most important items you will get for this run for certain segments. And we are actually going to use one immediately. You just walk up to this wall. You can grab the beast blood pellets through there. You might not need them, but there are some enemies later in the, or well, I guess bosses later in the game that you might need multiple of those to actually get through the fight. So never too bad to have extras. Drinky of your blue elixir, and we are on the way. Hang hard left, make sure that that guy doesn't get in swing range, and then walk far side around these wooden planks. If you step on the wooden planks, you'll drop into a pit full of crows. It's a real bad time. There'll be some crawly boys in the sludge over here. Just kind of work yourself around them. Right there is a chance where you could potentially get hit if you don't want to take that risk. You can uh, yeet Molotovs at them. Molotovs will kill them all in one hit because that is oil sludge. But uh, I've found typically nine times out of ten, they just kind of look at you and let you pass. Especially if you still have your blue elixir up, which if you're running quickly enough through there, it should get you all the way through here so that you don't have to worry about anything aggroing up to you while you're collecting all those shards in that tunnel. Next thing's next. Walk up on this guy and uh, give him a surprise from behind. Yah yeets. And get some more shards. Coming up through here, the infamous cannon segment. Don't uh, go over to the left. You are going to go straight, and then the first building that we get to on the right, we are going to duck dive deep down into. Right, Shmia. And then if you come over here, you can bust through there into the next building, and then come right over here. Give him a few minutes to uh, de-aggro anything that you might have aggroed and let this guy walk over into that building. And then we are just gonna run up and past Mr. Cannon. Ignoring him completely and into the building. At this point, go ahead and uh, once you get in here, we're going to hang a right. We're going to drop down here, but make sure that you have your throwing knives, as you can see there, equipped before you drop down. Drop, and then go straight through here. Now, this is what we needed the throwing knives for. There is a snaky boy here, and he is a one-shot machine. So... Taking him out from a distance is ideal. You can try to go for parries or whatnot, but I've found it easier just to kill him outright. There is no point in running past him. Nine times out of ten, he will at least hit you, if not one-shot you. He is a one-shot machine. I think all but the move he just did there, where he just kind of flails around, can one-shot you. And that one, if it hits you multiple times, it'll one-shot you as well. So, not worth the risk. Definitely... 
the best option is to just get some throwing dots. At this point in the game, you'll be doing anywhere from 90 some to 100 some damage, depending on how much you've leveled up. Should be an easy kill. We got eight because that gives us one extra if uh, we were happening to miss. If you need m more or think you might need more, um, you can get more. But eight tends to be what I go for. It gives me room, a little bit of room for error. So we're back down here. We went up there to unlock the gate. We are going to be bold hunters marking up to that uh, torch. Once we grab everything from around here. Grab that deal. And now we're going to get the last of our 20 twin twins. Don't need that there. That's more shining coins. Go all the way down here. Until you get to the end of this fence and then cut right. You will see that glow. Do not go for that one. We want the one that is over here. Snag that. Run up around the tree, watching out for any of the snake piles that you might see. Grab these bad boys here. Then we're going to duck down and go across the road. Hang a right through here. It is another mad man's knowledge. Like I said, you can never have too many. And then by this point, we should be able to duck down here, grab these. And if my calculations are correct, we have one extra uh, for getting our weapon up to plus six. There's a little droppy snake there. He does not uh, one shot you, but he will hit you if you just try to yeet it through. So do not try to yeet it through. Be smart. Let the snake do the things. Let him walk up on you, and then we are going to run past. There's a drop off over to the left. Jump over that drop off, and then we are going to come over here and grab another set of clothing that sells for quite a lot. Snag all of those goods, and then we are going to reawaken back at the dream. And then we're going to get ready for the Shadows of Yarnum fight. I am not going to be going through the fight in this video. I'm going to save that for the next video because that fight has the potential to take a full video's worth depending on how good the RNG is with the shadows. It is probably the most complex fight as far as nuance can go. So I think it deserves a video all on its own. Um, but let us get things settled. First things first, sell off all of the stuff that you have in your inventory. Double check, make sure you haven't missed anything. We have not. Next things next, pop all of your cold blood dew. You should have a few of them in your inventory. Then we go up, level up our weapon. Like I said, this should put us up to plus six. And now we have an extra slot for blood gem. So take your red gem off, replace it with your level two gem that we picked up before going into the forest. That one can stay, and then we're going to put our blood gem into the moon slot. Easy peasy. If you need any blood cocktails, go ahead and spend your insight on such. I tend to always carry 10 on me at this point in the game. There's no reason not to, especially with how much madman's knowledge we have to our disposal. And then lastly, we will be going and channeling the last of our echoes into skill. Puts us at a solid 23 skill, 25 strength, going into the Shadows of Yarnum fight, which is perfect. So, this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to leave a like. More videos like it are on the way, as well as some new uh, unique content coming your way. So, much love, Tenacrew. I will see you in the next Bloodborne Guide and in the next video. Much love.